Right, so let's open this up and I'll show you what it is. Now, before you see this, I will stress that I am struggling to find things on this challenge. It's a lot harder than I thought. But as well as that, I do want to do a mixture of things. I don't want to just fix the same sort of thing from the same sort of era all the time. So uh, when you see this, a lot of you will probably go, what? But if you actually think about it, there's something very clever on the inside, and especially maybe the younger viewers might not actually know how this works. Now, unfortunately for me, I do know how it works because I would have taken things like this apart when I was a kid. But saying that, I'm still very interested to see it now because I wouldn't have seen it in the last 30 years. And uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be clever. You ready? Ta-da! God, it looks a bit freaky. Right, this is an Andy Pandy doll. And obviously, a doll is a toy, fair enough. But you might think, come on, it's completely boring. You know, what are you going to do? Restore it? Repaint the eyes or something? No, with this one, apparently, it's supposed to talk. And it doesn't talk. But this is why I want to check this out. This isn't done by any batteries or anything, so there's no hidden batteries in here. This is all mechanical. So you pull it out to in theory give it charge it must be like a kind of clockwork thingy majig right okay now that's going back way too fast isn't it so what should happen is it should go in slowly sorry go go out and then it should go in i think slowly and play the sound but it's not playing it so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take apart mr randy pandy and see what's going on on the inside and then if i can fix it he needs one hell of a clean because he's absolutely filthy. But, apart from a rip there, apart from the dirt, he looks kind of intact. I'm thinking that he probably had more clothes on him originally. Now, I don't know anything about Andy Pandy because it was before my era. But as far as I know, it was either, well, I, I will look it up and tell you in the video. I think it was a TV series and also books as well. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to open this fella up and then see if I can get to the inside thing, because obviously there's something in here. I won't spoil it for you. Well, I, I don't even know myself. I've got, I've got a bit of an idea, but it was, you know, a, a long, long, long time ago. But obviously there's something in here that creates the sound when you pull this. So I need to open him up in a way that I will be able to get them back together again, bearing in mind that I haven't got a sewing mas machine and I'm not going to be very good at stitching. I think because he's already mucked up down here, because this side is actually perfect, I think, mind you, I need to get to this side though, don't I? Maybe not, maybe not, maybe I can work, if the string's long enough, I might be able to pull the thing out and then work on here without removing this part of it here. Or saying that, I can just undo that knot, can't I? and then uh, put it through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut him down here. I'm going to try to unstitch him from here because this looks a mess anyway. And uh, then we'll get to the inside of him. Now before I do that, let me show you what I paid for this fella. Okay, here it is. It says vintage Andy Pandy toy doll talking pull cord not working old toy doll 18 inches L. Must be large or something. And yes, I did have to pay a lot of money for it. I paid £18 and £4.90. So that is £22.90. Plenty of pictures on it. And it says down the bottom here, vintage Andy Pandy doll. Talking pull cord approximately 18 inches to pull cord pulls out and returns but no sound. Use condition with age related wear remarks etc. Un un under one arm the stitching has come away. The head is plastic rubber type, which is good detail. The clothes are dirty. So it is honestly described. So obviously you can see from this that it hasn't been attempted to be repaired before because I think this stitch in here is purely for here. I don't think that would leave enough room to get to the inside part. So uh, yeah, I had to pay a lot of money for it, but obviously these things now are pretty rare. I mean, maybe there's loads of them up in different people's attics all around the country, but on eBay, I think, when I looked, when I got this, I think this was the only one. So, there is potential that this is either going to really fail or actually be a really good one. Because if, for example, a couple of people want it and it's reminding them of their childhood, etc., then they might pay a lot more money than that if there's no other ones about. That's the way it works. So this could be an interesting one and something like this could win me the competition 
if I can get it working, if I can get it cleaned up. Now, just so we can sort of do a before and after, this is what he looks like now. You can see he's very grubby, very dirty all around the place, particularly the clothes are absolutely filthy. There's stains everywhere. I mean, it's really, really, really dirty. Now, I'm not sure if I do get it working, whether I'm gonna be able to clean this up. I'm thinking he needs a really good bath. In fact, I might actually put him in the bath with some kind of uh, washing powder or something like that to try to get him cleaned up. But obviously I have to get the inside bit out first. Right, so it's time to cut into him. Now, it seems a bit of a shame to do this because I'm thinking, I don't know the date off this, I'm thinking this is gonna be from the 60s or 70s. So there's a lot of age to it, but obviously we have to try and get this thing working. Now, uh, interestingly enough, with this, if I can't get it working, then, I mean, if it's not something simple, then I'm not gonna be able to get any spares for it because if there's no, no, none of the others for sale, then I'm not gonna be able to fix it unless on the inside it might be using standard parts. I couldn't even find out who made, I couldn't even find out who made this thing. So there's, there's just, I mean, I don't know where to look for old toys and there might be loads of information on this, but I looked on Google for an over, over an hour and I couldn't get come up with anything. I think in the past somebody sold one in Ireland, but uh, there was no, no YouTube videos, no nothing on it, so I don't even know what he's supposed to say. Which is unusual, because normally, no matter what you find, somebody would have done a YouTube video on it. So, as soon as I do this fix now, I bet when I come to sell it, there will probably be about 20 of them for sale, and they're all going for like $4.99. <laughs> I was amazed it actually cost so much, but I kind of wanted to do this, and I just thought the inside of it would be interesting. Right, this stitch in here is obviously a pretty poor job. This is probably something similar to how I would do it myself. But now, if I can get this working, then obviously I will try to, uh, I'm not saying I'm gonna learn how to sew, but I will try to hide the stitching as much as I can. Well, I'm just gonna fast forward through this, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just picking away at all the stitching until I get it all out. Looking at it here, it looks like there's three different colors of threads. It looks like there's blue, yellow, and white. So I've got a feeling that this has been repaired on three separate occasions, but it says to me that this toy must have been uh, well used. I mean, I know it's filthy, but in a way that's a good thing, isn't it? Because it means it's been used and hopefully loved by somebody. Well, that's most of it away now. I think maybe all this white stuff might be the original not sure if it's the original stitching or not. So I'm going to start working my way down now and I'm going to make sure I don't cut any off the actual cloth itself. All I want to do is do the uh, do the stitches. So the good thing is, as I open it up, you can see that it sort of gives to me the next stitch that I can then just pull out. And then hopefully as I work my way down, I'm not going to ruin any off the... clothing. You can see the, the, how clean he is in there, the difference between here and the uh, blue and white in there. So you never know, if he gets a good wash, this fella might come up quite clean. I'm trying to think now, when my kids were young, I don't think they had any toys that worked by a pull cord. I wonder, could it be some, maybe is it too expensive to do nowadays, or is it some safety issue where that could possibly go around a little, you know, child's neck and then uh, strangle them? It's just that uh, when I was young, there was loads of these, and now I don't remember any of these in any toy from uh, when my kids were young. Well, they still are young, but, you know, this age young. The, the, the thing on the inside is this big. I can feel it. The plastic is that big, so I'm going to have to make a huge incision right the way. I don't know, I might even have to go up here. Probably will have to go from here all the way up. 
So I'm going to have to keep keep going. So there's going to be a lot of stitching up required, which is annoying because for me that's going to be the hardest part. Now, if you had this toy or you know anything about it, definitely add it down to the comments down below because I will have another look on Google. But I was uh, I didn't come across anything when I looked at it last time. So if you know what age it's from, I'm thinking 60s or 70s, but again, that's just a guess. Also, I don't even know if Andy Pandy was just a UK thing, or whether he existed in America. Look at that, there's actual... Why would they have different colour? Why would they have different colour? Oh, that must be for his legs. That fluff, yeah, there you go. That fluff's for his legs. Look at that. Right, well, we can put that back in his legs. Well, I don't think I need to go much more down. That should be enough. So I now need to start working up. Good thing is, so far I haven't damaged any of the uh, the clothing. Right now I'm getting there. Right, so it looks like there's some sort of plastic up the top here. Maybe that's to protect the. Looks like that goes up into the head or something. Let's see if I can get this out. Yes, I can. Yay! Excellent. Right, okay. And I need to get the bottom out. Yay! There we go. Now, look at that. Very interesting. Right, that looks a lot more modern than I thought. Oh, it's made by Mattel. Excellent, I've got some info on it now. Check this out. Mattel Incorporated Hawthorne, Calif, California, USA. It's got a US patent and foreign patents pending. Painted in Canada, 1980, oh, 1962. Ah, okay, so I suppose that shows the age of the toy. 1962. Made in Mexico. Whee. Right, okay. And there's some sort of model number down here, so maybe... Maybe this thing here was in loads of different toys, and then the inside part of it, which makes the actual noise, was just probably swapped for different uh, different things. Now, I don't know whether to tell you what I think is inside it now. I might as well tell you now. Right, as far as I remember, it's like a li little record player. So when you pull the cord, there's a little disc in here that spins, and then it's supposed to be able to play whatever it is. So I'm thinking that this thing here, because it's Mattel, was probably in dolls and everything, you know, like little girls dolls and all sorts of different things. And then they changed the record part of it to match the particular doll. That's as far as I'm aware, but I could be wrong. So what we have to do now is we have to dismantle this here and see what's inside it. The problem is I can't see any screws on it. It looks annoyingly like it's been glued. Why would they glue it? Why couldn't they just screw it together? Because, I mean, this is inside the doll, so... That's... That's a bit annoying, that. Because... I don't really know how I'm going to get into it without breaking it. I was sure there was going to be... Screws in here. I have to get in here to find out why... Why it's not working, so I'm going to have to get into the mechanism. I really don't know how I'm going to get in because it's been all glued. What's this thing here? Is this come loose? No. That's so annoying, that is. I thought it would be just screwed together. It really is annoying. Right, I think I'm going to have to get a Dremel tool and cut along there because I've got no other way of opening that. I just want to see what that plastic is. Ah, right, here we go. There's plastic there. 
just around the top bit. Maybe it's just to, uh, oh, it's probably because this is a slight bit rough, would it be just to give this a little bit of protection so it doesn't wear through the clothing? That's probably what it is. Like that. Yeah, I'd say that's what it is. And that slots into there like so. There. To make it easier on myself, I am going to undo this here and just work on the voice box. So when I do this, the string's going to go flying inside, but that isn't going to be a problem. In fact, all I'm going to do is cut it here because it just means the string's going to be a tiny little bit shorter. And then I can also see how they've knotted it up, so I'll be able to mimic that again. So I'm just going to cut it here. So when I do this now, it will go flying inside. There you go. Right, now I can work on... Oh no, I can't, can I? Still can't, oh god. Still can't work on it because this is like kind of riveted together. Okay, well when I open it up here, there must be some kind of little ball at the end of this, a bit like some sort of fishing thing like that. And uh, when I open this up, that should pop off. Well, I'm going to get the Dremel tool set up. I don't believe this. I'm so sorry. I didn't record the bit after I got the Dremel tool. I'm so annoyed because obviously that was the, the, the main part of opening it up to see the inside. Right, okay. Let me recap what happened. Try to recreate. So basically, oh, this is so irritating. Uh, this is the Dremel tool here, so all I have to do is turn it on here and then you can see it will spin round. And I've got different speeds. Yeah, so it's just like a, a tiny little cutting blade. Imagine just a tiny little circular saw. And then what I did is obviously I wore some goggles and then I started by cutting it up here. And then I got to about here and I thought to myself, I wonder if it will pry apart. So then what I did is, because I was worried, when I got to here I realised I didn't want to cut through this bit. So I started to pry it apart and then it pried and you can see it was all nice and neat all the way along here because it was just prying apart. Again here, around here, around here, until I got to here. And then I was trying to pry it and all that was happening is I was starting to get kind of like, you know when the plastic starts to go white as if it's going to snap. So then what I had to do is I had to get the tool again, the Dremel tool, and I cut along here up to this bit here and then I managed to pry it and basically the whole thing just sprung open and this is what we got here. Now I was uh, saying oh okay yeah you know this is the kind of spring here that you pull and then I said that it looks like this thing here is the record at the bottom and then I looked at this thing flapping around here and when I pulled it out I realized that if you look really closely there is actually a tiny little needle on there just here. So obviously this is the needle off the record player. Now I'm not sure how the thing produces sound. This thing here must mimic some kind of speaker. It looks like it's on some sort of spring. And that's as far as we got. So what I then said was that uh, I'm now going to clean it all up because there's bits of plastic and stuff everywhere. So I just want to start on a nice clean, uh, clean surface. And so I haven't taken this apart here and I haven't looked at this and I don't know what the situation is. I can see that there's kind of a little guide here. So obviously the rope pull goes through this bit here. You know the rope pull here that I cut earlier. So that must go through this bit and up to this bit here. And uh, Andy just came away from there because this little thing here, where is it now? Let me show the inside. Where is it? There, there you go. That just fits into this part here like so like that okay so that's as far as we got so massive apologies for not filming that bit but exactly what I've said there is what happens well right, okay so I've got the camera set up overhead so now we can get a good uh, look at what's going on it looks like that's some stuffing from his leg again I just want to see if the arms are made of the same stuffing Yeah, they are. And his head 
is uh, completely hollow. Right, so we have to try and work out what's going on here. So this thing goes down the bottom. So this must be, what does this do? Would this slow it down? Would this slow the spinning down? But how does that work? So this is out on a spring like that. Oh, look. Oh, yes. What we have here, an old Rub ah yeah, rubber bands, a belt. So this is exactly the same as the Walkmans from the Walkmans that I was fixing. So the reason that it's going too fast, remember when I pulled it out and it goes in really fast, is because this has to have, see there's a little pulley here? That belt should go round between, I presume, the record or this here or something, must be the other side, and here, and it must be on this thing here that slows it down because this has kind of uh, felt pads on it and this is going to fit into here and it must be this movement here that stops it from spinning too fast so that's good so it looks like we need to put a new belt on it which might not necessarily be a massive problem because I do have some of them now let me just see the rest of this here I want to be careful because I don't want this spring to fly out and hit me Right, so the spring is, where does this go? Where's that, does this wind round? Oh. Ah, this is the record here. This black thing here with all the grooves on it, look. So the needle goes in all these little grooves here. Ah, this is brilliant. Right, so that goes there. That's fine, that's fine. The, uh, I, wanna, I don't wanna scratch the record. Can I take this off completely? Yes, I can. Good. Right, so the string goes around this inner bit here. Fine. So the string goes on this top one. The uh, Let's call it the main spring. This thing here goes on this one here. And this is the record that they change in the factory. So, let me just clean up my hand. So let's say now, if you had some kind of like chatty Cathy type doll, they would be changing the record here, so that's glued into place. So this would be the same mechanism in all of them, apart from the record would get changed. Right, and this is the old belt, so I'm gonna to have to get some belt that fits this. You can see it's just broken down, just like I had on one of my Walkman videos. Over the years, these just break down. Okay, so we need to find a belt, and we need to then find out what's how it works because I'm not sure how this thing here by the belt going around here oh so the belt goes around this bit here this big bit here so from here it goes on to here uh, still got the grease in there which is nice I'm just a bit confused this bottom bit here so I understand this bit here this needle goes on to, I need to clean all this up, but this needle goes on to here and creates the sound, uh, but I don't know how that transmits into here yet, but hopefully that will become clear in a little while. Right, so I'm happy with the cleanliness of it all. So I need to find a belt now that's gonna go around everything. So this is the grease that I'm gonna be using.
So what I'll have to do is I'll have to try and clean the grease off here and then super glue this onto there. So I suppose it's been dropped many times and then one of the times it just unfortunately broke. I think if I can get a little bit of a fixing on there, I think it will actually be okay because I don't reckon there's a huge amount of strain on that needle. And also I think the top of it here is going to be kind of held in place anyway. Well, I'm going to give this stuff a go, see if it's any good. Right, so I'm going to put it on here and rotate it around until it feels like it's in the right place. Well, that feels good to me, so I'm just going to hold it there for a couple of minutes. Classic there, it didn't stick and now I've got some on the actual record itself, which is obviously not going to be a good thing is it? Try to get it off before it completely goes rock hard. I hate super glue. Do you know what, that could have now ruined it. I can feel my fingers sticking together. It's always the way I stick my fingers and everything else together apart from the thing that I'm trying to stick. Let's see if there's any stickiness left in this now. I don't really want to put loads more on because it's going to... No, there's no stickiness left there now. The uh, problem with super glue is when you put too much on it just ends up kind of melting the plastic. Isn't really. This is brand new super glue, and it's not working. I wonder, is it the the plastics I'm trying to stick together? No, that doesn't seem. This seems to be more like pound shop super glue. But this was expensive. Maybe it's the plastics. I'm sure, it's not the super glue. I'm just leave that there for a bit because I can't hold it for ten minutes. So you can see the super glue mark here. Just going to check see if the needle still goes through it. No. It does on some of them, but those it doesn't. I'm just going to keep cleaning it like this and hopefully... Hopefully it will clear those lines out. Because I believe how a record wor works, I've never taken one apart, never worked on one, but in here there's loads of little ridges. If you can imagine from the side here, if you were to zoom in really close, it would be like a mountain. This is what I think anyway. It's like a mountain, mountain, and so obviously when it's moving over here, it's causing different vibrations. So this is moving up and down the mountain. And I think in this toy, those vibrations are then fed through here, this bit here, which then goes into this kind of speaker here. So I think that's how it works. Now I can't actually feel anything with my, I don't know if I can feel it with my hand or not. Yeah I can there, it's really rough here. Yeah really rough. So maybe these outside ones don't do anything. I don't know, maybe it doesn't travel the whole way on here. Maybe it only goes from there inwards, not sure. Anyway, we can worry about that later because if I put it in and it's really, if the speech is really unrecognisable on certain parts, well maybe I can just get a fine needle and try to clear, clear out these bits here. In hindsight, what I should have done is just taken this out before super glue in that part.
Right, okay, so what you've witnessed there is about three, yeah, or maybe even more, hours of me mucking around with this and getting absolutely nowhere. But I haven't given up yet because I'm now going to start working on the actual record because I think it might be the record that's faulty. So basically, let me just show you exactly what's what because I can't let you watch three hours of it, you'd be bored out of your mind. So basically, this is the record here, like we already knew, and this is a clutch here, so it goes one way but not the other way. So what happens is we give it energy by pulling this string. And when we pull this string, we're winding up this main spring, just like a clock. And then this, uh, this spring here will slowly release the energy. And when it releases the energy, it's spinning this. The reason we've got this here is because this acts as a, uh, well, this is basically to slow it down. And what should happen is these should move out ever so slightly and they should hit against the edges here to then slow it down because if the edges weren't here it would just be spinning really fast again. It's got felt on it here which feels pretty good if this was really smooth and polished then it could be this at fault but in this instance it's not. So this then slows it down so it doesn't just unwind itself in for example one second. Now the reason we need the pulley around it, the, the belt, is because from here it goes round here and then we need it to go onto this to slow it down. So basically the belt goes down the bottom of this one and it goes inside of this white one here. So the belt basically goes around the record and it just purely goes around this thing here which is called a brake or also a governor I think is the name, governor. So basically it just goes around here, around the governor and this side here. Okay, so you just got to make sure that the belt is in this bit of the groove of the pulley and then it goes round to there. And then the clever bit is this little needle here goes onto here. It's definitely in this position up here and the reason it's in this position, it's really obvious once you know. Look at where this kind of spring thing is here on the speaker. Can you see? It's not on this bit. So initially I thought that this was vibrating, but of course it's not. It's the needle that vibrates and goes straight onto this thing here. And this thing is basically a spring that moves up and down in here. And even now, if you listen, like you can hear how loud it is. Yeah, so this basically is like a, a diaphragm to just amplify the sound. So what happens is this little bridge at the top of the needle is hitting against here. So basically it goes like this. And then when it moves up and down on the record, it's doing little movements there, which is creating the sound. So what I think is happening is, because all that's happening is I'm getting uh, just the same sound, just like, like, brap, 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 brap. So But it is working, it's just not anything understandable. And also, I can't see this. Apparently, this should go from the outside to the inside on every single pull. So every time you pull it out and let it go, it should go from the outside to the inside. And if you look closely, and, and sorry, it's not. To me, it seems to be just staying in the same sort of spot or just jumping around these bits here. What I'm thinking is happening is, I think it just keeps jumping around the same ones here because the grooves are damaged. So now what I'm gonna do is get a, a wooden cocktail stick, a sharp one, and I'm just gonna go around every single groove just to make sure they're clear. Remember I did do a bit of super glue here, so that might not be helping anything, but even when I put the needle past this, it doesn't seem to be making much sense anyway. And I think it's because it's probably all scratched up. It could have been me, or it could be because this was broken on the inside, and maybe for the past few years it's been scratching around the place, I don't know. So that's where we're working on now. Uh, but that's taken me basically hours to work out. So uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is try to work out if this record here is okay or not. No, I've never tried to take scratches out of a record, but I believe you can just run something like a sharp bit of wood. I've also got a sharp little bit of plastic here along each of the grooves. And uh, I think it's supposed to clean them out. So it's not gonna cost me anything, so I might as well give it a go. All right, this is getting interesting. Now look, I've, uh, I haven't put it back together. I haven't put the string or anything in, but I have just wound it up to where I think it should be. 
And if I put the needle here and put pressure on, I think I might know now how the needle gets pushed back out. It's because the spring unwinds and pushes it back out. So if you were to have this too tight, the problem would be that this, the uh, needle wouldn't get pushed back out again. So watch this. So, see? And then it gets pushed back out of there. So I think that's how... And then when you pull the spring again, this thing uh, this thing gets wound up, which winds the spring up again. And then when you let go of the spring, so for example it gets to about there, when you let go of the spring, it does the next uh, torque. I think that might be as simple as that. Well, I'm going to keep cleaning this one here because I'm just doing it now and I can feel that it's still jumping. It doesn't seem to want to go right the way across. Right, okay, so I've given that a good clean. It might need more, I don't really know, but I wanna, I wanna try it like this now. And, uh, and then if it's working a bit better, then I'm happy to spend longer cleaning up that record. That The record definitely feels smoother than it did before. See, if you were doing these all the time, you'd fully know what the records feel like, but I've, uh, I haven't got a clue what they're supposed to feel like. Right, here we go. See if it's any different. Even if I get a quick or slow word out of it, I'll be happy. Oh, I didn't put the needle in. Hold on. Right, now. I can't believe it's no different at all. Keep had it a little bit longer, but I'm gonna to have to call it a day soon on this. Oh well, at long last, right? It's not working, but I put a really tight belt in it. Basically, I put one in that was this small, so it's really, really tight. But now, listen, for the first time ever, I can hear something that sounds familiar to speech. Ready? Oh, no. Right, I did the time before. I think that's because the needle is now probably stuck somewhere. Yeah, see the needle stuck. Right, the needle's stuck on the inside, so maybe I need to loosen up that cord a bit. Right, let's uh, the, the the spring. Right, now it's on the outside. Right, now we know that's moving too slow, don't we? If it's too slow, maybe the belts are too tight. But anyway, I'm getting there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this one revolution. So I'm going to move this round because it's not loosened up enough to let the needle go back to the beginning. I'm still having major problems with this. The problem I've got is it works and it sounds pretty clear now. Let me just let me just quickly show you. The problem is that this needle is not resetting. All the weight of this spring is down here and I need it to be up here and I can't get it back up here and that's the problem. No matter what I do, no matter how many revolutions I do, no matter where I bend this, all the weight of it is still down that way instead of being up here so it's not pushing the needle back so it's only ever going to work once but when it does work once it does actually I can actually hear it now it's something about have you seen loopy so listen to this it's a little bit slow now because I've got it as loose as possible to try and push the thing back
But now, when I do it again, yeah, so it doesn't reset itself. So now, the strings all the way in, this needle should be back out here, but it's not, because the weight of the spring here is here, rather than being up here. If it was pushed up here, it would push the needle back. So, it's getting late tonight, so I think, believe it or not, I've been on this, I think now, for nearly five hours, which is absolute madness. So I think I'm gonna call it a day, start again fresh tomorrow, and then hopefully I'll have a bit more enthusiasm for it then. Okay, I think, I think I might have sorted it. Not the quality of the sound or anything, but look, I've constantly been putting this under the string because I thought that would have to be against it. But look, if I put it above the string, then it seems to do it more than once. So maybe, I'm sure it's not that, but look. The thing is, it's saying the same phrase over and over again. I need to find out whether they go under or over. Watch. And now, again. That seemed to say something different at the beginning. Well, not sure, not 100% convinced by that, but at least it's doing it. Maybe it only ever said one phrase, but I think it's unlikely. I think I need to find out if this says more than one phrase, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. Right, anyway, now I'm definitely calling it a day. So it's the next day now, and after a good night's sleep, I am re-motivated again to attack this project and get it sorted today. So I was looking on YouTube quite unsuccessfully, and then I just Googled it, and on, I don't know, the third or fourth page on Google, this came up. And this website has got all the answers that I need, so I'm going to show it to you. That's what it's called. And... If I click on it here where it says replacing the belt, it tells me exactly what I need to know. So all the way down, and basically the needle does go above the cord. So I kept putting it below the cord, and that's why it wasn't returning back. This tells me pretty much everything I need to know. It's really good about if it's running slow, if it's running quick, where to oil, not oil, but where to lubricate, etc. You know, they did it completely different than what I did it, because obviously these guys have done it before. So uh, if you're interested in doing this, or if you're interested in the proper way to do it, check out this website, because it basically tells you everything you need to know, even how to do the knot, how to test the box, if it's too slow, if it's too fast, etc. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna take apart mine all again, I'm gonna give it a really good clean, I'm gonna clean the record again, because it still was only saying one phrase, so I'm wondering if the other start-off grooves that start the other phrases are somehow damaged. And then I'm just gonna basically do what it says on this website, and hopefully by the end of it we will have a working box. So next time you see this now, it might well be working. Actually, I've just discovered something. So you know it's only playing one sound. Well, if you look, can you see around the edge? There's like a spiral bit. So if the needle's there, it's gonna go off in this direction here. So for example, on this one here, it's gonna follow this spiral around, yeah? But then look, there's another spiral starting here, which is gonna lead to a load more different grooves. Let me see if I can get those spirals in the light there. There, so all the way around. In fact, you should be able to count how many songs there are. So let's say if we start with this one here, if I try not to move the pulley. So we've got E here, so we've got one spiral here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It looks like there might be about twelve. I mean, if that's right, I thought, I don't know if there'd be as many as 12 different sayings, but... Yeah, so I suppose depending on where it starts, the needle starts, because it's always going to be a little bit random depending on where this ends up. 
and that's why you should have different sayings, not the same saying each time you do it. So the very fact with me that is saying the same saying each time says to me that most of these spirals are not working properly. That's what I think anyway, I could be completely wrong. Okay, so the time has come for me to spend no more time in this voice box. I now can get two sayings, the have you got loopy and something about see Rosie too. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to call it a day on it. The problem is I've got too many variables. To begin with, I've got the variable off the felt pads. They could be a little bit too smooth or they might be a little bit too thin. Then the next variable is the actual O-ring itself. I'm not using the proper O-ring, I'm using Walkman O-rings and elastic bands and stuff. So obviously they're gonna have slightly different tensions and different sizes than the original one. The next variable is the spring. Remember I've had it wound up and unwound numerous times and no matter how I seem to set it, it will either be too slow or too quick. And then the last massive variable will be the record player itself. So with that one, it's scratched all over the place. So, the, I mean, you've seen the state of it. It's just got massive spiral scratches going all the way through it. Sometimes it's got tiny little holes in it. And, and as well as that, remember when the thing snapped off where the needle sits on, that's going to be another variable because when I glued it back on, if that was, for example, a millimetre out, then possibly that could affect it as well. So with all these things now, there's too much variables for me to get this working, especially when I haven't got a second one to swap parts around with. But good news is I fully understand how it works and the reason the needle wasn't resetting itself is because it needs to be on the spring and then when you yank that spring it pops the needle it kind of slides the needle back over to the beginning of the record player so right now the record needle will be in but as I start putting this that needle now will work its way out to the outer edge There you go, that was the second one. So what I'm gonna now do is I'm gonna glue this all with hot glue gun all the way around it, and then I'm gonna tape it up to, uh, just in case the glue comes undone, I'm gonna put tape all around the edge and wrap tape around here, and hopefully then it will stay intact. It's a shame I can't get more sayings out of it, but really, considering the state of that record player, I'm quite lucky even to get two. Even if they don't sound very good at all, they are still slightly recognizable. So that's what I'm going to work on now and then we're going to wash this thing here. So I think I need to undo this string and then uh, because obviously I don't want to get any of this wet so I'm going to undo the string and then I have to do the string up again when it's uh, to stop this to stop the string disappearing in the voice box. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some washing powder, you know, that same stuff you wash your clothes with or washing liquid, and I am going to fill up a sink of nice warm water and I'm going to soak him in it, head and all, I'm just going to soak everything. I'm going to try to keep the head out of it, but I do want to get all this wet, and then we're going to see what he comes out like. Right, so here he is in the sink, and I haven't even added any washing up powder or anything to that yet, that is just plain water. Dunked him around a few times, and look at the dirt that's come out of it. It's like a yellow brown colour. I don't know if the camera's not really picking it up. It looks clear in the camera, but it should be the same colour as the sink there. Absolutely filthy. Okay, so I've added a good handful of this stuff into there, and now I'm just going to let him soak for a good, I think I'm going to leave him in there for half an hour or so. Most of his face is out there. The paint seems to be pretty waterproof, so I'm hoping that's not going to damage it. And uh, yeah, then I need to rinse him out. Maybe I'll need to do it all over again and maybe I'll need to put some vanish on some of the harder stains, but we'll see what it comes out like after this. So here he is looking much cleaner. Now my wife came home and she said that I was using non-biological, which is not the stuff to use apparently. So uh, she gave me some aerial washing up liquid and also some vanish, and now look at him, he looks much better. So I'm gonna let him dry for a bit and then I'm gonna do the boots again with vanish because the staining looks really bad on these. But I mean, it's wet, so when it's dry it should look even better, but he definitely looks cleaner, I think. But I won't know yet until I fully finish. Right, so he's all clean as he can be. There's still a lot of staining on the feet there. 
I can't seem to get that out at all. But the rest of him is looking pretty good, but I won't know until it's fully dry. I also gave that foam that's wrapped around the voice box as well a good clean. Still, you can see the outline of where I presume the box has been for ages, but still, that'd be absolutely fine. So now, once it's fully dry, I can then put the stuffing back in and then get all that voice box glued up and taped up. And, uh, yeah, hopefully he'll look better than he did before. Well, OK, so here he is. He's nearly dry. The, that arm with all the stuffing in is still wet. You can see the colour difference there. But the rest of it's all dry now. It's come out pretty good. He's still obviously faded. That's not going to change. So you can see the difference between the blue on the seam and the one next to it. You can see that... Uh, that's sort of like a brighter, nicer blue than all the rest of it. But before he was absolutely filthy and now he's not. So I think he's definitely going to look better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this string back through this metal hole. And then after that I need to glue gun, you know this hot glue gun, I need to glue gun it all the way around the edge. So I need to take it apart slightly, glue gun it, seal it. And then I think I'm going to put some tape around it as well. So right now I've got to undo this string again pass it through do that then I've got to put all the stuffing back in and I've got to wrap this voice box in this foam again so there's quite a bit of work to do I'm just gonna be fast forwarding it through it all because obviously this video is going on and on and on and uh, yeah then I've got to try my best and do the stitching up so let's get started on it Oh, looking at it there, I've just frayed that bit now and I undid that knot. Uh, I think I'm going to have to replace this string. It's still very grubby and as well now I've just frayed that bit there. So it's getting shorter and shorter and if it gets any shorter it's not going to be able to play the full part of the speech. So I'm going to have to replace this string. Now for the new cord, the string, apparently you can use stuff for blinds, you know, the blind cord, or as well you can use fishing reel string, which I've never heard of because I thought fishing reel was all that kind of nylon stuff, but apparently you can get string as well. So I eBayed fishing reel string just to see if I could get some, see how much it was, and one person selling it was listed as fishing reel string and kite cord, and luckily I remembered I did have a kite, so I think this stuff's going to be perfect because it's nice and strong. It looks like anything that's thin and strong will do the job. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put some kite string on here and then you see I can have it long and make sure it's all working perfectly and I can just cut it down to size at the very, very ends. Okay, so I've attached that little loop to the cord, and this is the replacement cord, and I did the little knot that was shown in that website. It does seem to be very strong, so now I have to try and glue this together. So this is my last time to put a little bit of grease in here. Change out the pull cord now so it's now nice and clean. I've also put a bit of glue gun on the end of the knot just to stop it from fraying. It's working the same as it was before. So at least it's doing something. It's not great, but it's something. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the stuffing all back into the legs and the arm. And remember the stuffing in the arm was slightly different. So I'm going to do all that. Then I need to wrap this foam back around this voice box. And then it's time to stitch them up. I've got this lovely thick tape here that I'm going to put around it. It's going to look horrible, but nobody's going to see the inside. 
and if somebody needs to take this apart again in the future they're going to have a bit of a job but it was a bit of a job to get into it originally because remember it was completely sealed. Okay, I managed to get it back in, but in doing so, I ripped this bit here. So now he's going to need stitch in there as well, and that's not on a seam, so that's going to look uh, that's going to look pretty bad. But to be fair, my stitching is going to look pretty bad anyway, isn't it? So I'm not sure how it's all going to turn out in the end. Right, I see a few wet patches because of this arm here. Okay, so there he is. He's starting to take shape. I've got to kind of wiggle him back in. I've got a bit more stuff in to put in here. I think this goes on top of his legs just up here at this bottom bit here. So I'm going to do that and then basically I'm going to stitch it. Now, I have done tiny bits of stitching in the past. For example, if a button's come off, <laughs> something along those lines. Uh, I... Uh, I think I had to fix a toy years ago, one of my kids' toys. So there's no point in me showing you it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hide the stitching the best I can. So I'm going to start off by doing this sort of inside seam here. But, I mean, it is going to look a complete mess. But you need to remember how messy this looked anyway. So I'm hoping it's not going to look that much worse than it did to begin with. Obviously, before it was just here and now it's going to be going all the way down here. I'm really annoyed that this broke here. But... It's probably in the best place to break because it's kind of where the top of the leg meets the body, so it's not too bad. Uh, I'm not going to film it because there's no point. It's going to take me absolutely ages, but hopefully it will come out okay. So next time you see him, he will be stitched up. Right, so I'm starting on the easy bit and then I'm going to uh, go on to the harder bits so you can see... That this is probably going to take me a good few hours but that's what hopefully it's going to look like at the end I'm going to do those kind of stitches just going all the way down and I think it will look okay right so that's just to prove that I can do a bit of stitching because I knew what the comments were going to say they were going to say that I sent it to somebody to be stitched so but when you see the finished result you will know that it was me that did it right let's uh, get a move on now with this Okay, so I've done the bit down here and it's come out pretty good. So the stitches are visible and they weren't visible before, but obviously I'm doing it by hand now. And it's quicker than I thought it would be. I thought I'd be doing this all night. You see? Not looking too bad. Right, I'm going to continue with this. That is it. At long last we are finished. That was an absolute epic. I know it doesn't seem like it because of all the fast forwarding in the video, but I have sunk so many hours into him. But now that he's finished, I do actually like it and I think it looks a lot better than it did to start with. I need to double check what it did look like at the beginning because it was so long ago it slipped my mind. But uh, I, th I think, yeah, looking at how clean he is now, and I'm really happy with the way the stitching come out. thing that I'm massively not happy about is the pull cord speech. The speech is absolutely rubbish, but it's still doing something, and I think it's better to do something than nothing at all. So as you can see, he's been having a couple of beers, and that is the reason he sounds the way he does. But don't worry, he is 56 years old. So he is entitled to it. So that's one saying. And I don't know what that is. Something or other, some name. I have Rosie too. Don't know because I don't know the storyline. But for 56 years old, I think he's come out really good. So let me show you all the stitching. So do you remember I managed to rip it here? But that doesn't look too... Well, when I say it doesn't look too bad for a complete amateur, it doesn't look too bad. But the main thing is, it's nice and strong. So I've gone up here 
around here. Remember this arm was off as well? So obviously when you look real close it's not great but uh, and then what I did is I brought the thread around on the inside and I just sewed up here as well because it was starting to come loose. So the good thing is now he feels nice and sturdy and he's come out really clean. At least he's got some kind of voice box in it. I've had a look on eBay, I can't find any records. If I could have, I would have changed the record and I reckon it would have been perfect. But there's, I still can't find any information about this particular one at all. Everything seems to be more American ones. Maybe Andy Pandy was just a UK version, I don't know. But uh, I think it is very rare. That doesn't mean it's gonna be worth any money, but it definitely is rare. So I'm gonna pop this on eBay and we'll have to see what we get for it. But if you have a look, everything's come out clean. The feet still have a few stains on them here, but overall, he's looking pretty good. Still got a few water droplets here, just from uh, this hand here is still wet. So it kind of, when it touches here, it makes it wet. But uh, head and everything's come out good. It's got a few bits of blonde missing. But overall, did I like this one? If I'm honest with you, not when I'm doing it, because there was too many variables and it was getting on my nerves because I was just going around in circles. But now it's finished, yes, I do like it. Would I do another one? Definitely, and now I fully understand that voice box, and to do another one, I reckon I could do that voice box in an hour, and uh, I, I would be pretty confident that I would get it right this time, because now I fully understand it, which is off these videos. So, if I had my time again, would I do this? Yes, I think I would, because I've gained a lot of knowledge from it, and I think the inside of that is a real nice little piece of design. I think it's really clever to take a, a, a record player and put it down to such a small size, I think, remember, 56 years ago, I think kids would have absolutely loved the fact that their toy could speak. Okay, so that's the fix done. Now you're gonna see if it sells on eBay and if it did sell, what it sold for. Andy, Andy, Andy Pandy, where are you? Ah, there you are. Look at you, you're good for nothing. You're useless. You're a drunk is what you are. What are you up to? Atari? What? Supermodels go wild? Is this what's become of you? Oh, Andy, you've let me down. And you've sold. And guess what you sold for? I'm disgusted. Here he is, you can see. Ended. That's right, £5.50! And £6.99 postage. Thank God I upped the postage a bit. £5.50, Andy. What have you got to say for yourself? No, Andy, I haven't seen Loopy. I've never seen Loopy. I don't even know what you're on about. You are out of here. I've had enough of you. Get out of my house. That's it, Gorn. Off you go on your bike now. You, my friend, have probably cost me this competition. I haven't worked it out yet, but I'm definitely up down. So take your Atari handheld, take your favourite 3DO game, and on your way. I don't want to see you again.